here we go. And I'm guessing that you guys are probably going to have a little bit of a warm up first. And knowing that, how you warm up makes a difference. Um, I really want to make sure, and your forehand technique is really good. I don't know if you ever watched a Tanda Musa play, but I see some similarities um, with just a nice ease of a forehand stroke. I like your grip. It's very soft, which means you're going to be able to get really good racket snap. Also like your stance. I like that you have a back foot and that you're turning your shoulders. Your left hand is there for balance. So everything right out of the shoot is a-okay, looking great. Now, what I will say is when you're warming up, really pay attention to moving your feet. Be aware of the weight transfer. Be aware of your placement. Don't go over there and just like kind of block the ball and hit it all over the place. Last ball in the net, it was on your paddle. You need to make it over the net. You need to turn your shoulders. You need to really guide the ball. Let your follow throughs go towards the target, okay? Obviously, I'm guessing that you're going to start probably doing a little bit of forehand loops right now. Your opponent, who has really nice technique on the far side, um, he's going to spray the ball a little bit. That's normal. So when he sprays the ball, make sure you're reading it off of his racket. Your forehand loop is awesome. It is really nice. It's really balanced. Just remember, if we're looping topspin, we don't have to lift up on the ball as much as we need to rotate our shoulders moving forward. That's one of the big challenges I see with so many players, especially in that 2000 range where they kind of have the one loop that fits all situations. And it really doesn't make sense to do it that way. If somebody gives you an underspin ball, drop your racket down, spin it up. Somebody gives you a topspin ball or a block, start at ball height and go forward. Why are we lifting topspin? The ball is going to go up naturally. So if you go into lifting that topspin ball, you're going to have a lot of mishits. Okay. Backhand to backhand warm up. I love the color of your forehand rubber, which I couldn't see. I would take your left hand. I don't know if it's on your hip, but I would definitely move it a little bit more forward so that when you are in your backhand, I can kind of show it like this. You want to be in re ready position here with your left, left, left hand. Let me see if I can do it so the green screen doesn't. Left hand up here. So when it comes time for forehand, you can turn both of them together. If my left hand is down on my hip, it's a whole different stroke moving to my forehand and my shoulders will begin to separate. This is a real basic mistake that I see about 75% of the people making. Right now it looks good. Right now it looks like your elbows are high and you've got a nice counterbalance. But if you ever are warming up and you find that you're putting your left hand on your leg or your hip, it looks cool, but it's guaranteed to screw your timing up when you go to a forehand after a backhand. So here we go, first game. Serve, get ready. Nice. Just remember, when we serve with our forehand, the whole purpose of that is to get a forehand in. So be careful if he plays the ball into your middle after you serve with your forehand, and then you play a backhand. The reason for a forehand serve is to play a forehand on balls that go into the backhand side. Okay. Spin up. Good. Good opening. A little bit high, but that's fine. I mean, the main thing that I'm seeing is that you're, at least you're taking the initiative. Okay. When you push the ball, we're either going to push it short or we're going to push it deep. We're not going to push it on the table. Either cut it short or jam it deep into him. Same is true on serves, right? We either serve it short or we serve it deep. We don't serve it to the middle of the table to where you don't stress their feet. Okay, that ball looked like it went off the end, just got a little bit too close to it. Give yourself some space on the forehand. Make sure you have enough time. Okay, that ball needs to be backhand looped. A deep serve to your backhand with underspin, we can't push that back. You have to backhand loop it. And we'll just keep working on your backhand loop. Top spin, good. Okay, block, get up to the table. Once you're in that position of blocking, try to shorten the distance and get closer to the net. Okay, be ready for the flips. Be ready for the flips. Good fight, good fight. Okay, you're getting some frequent flyer mileage points back there. Really try to hold the table. Go out at an extreme and see how often spin up. So the, the spin up, the I feel, feel the racket's a little bit too low when you're spinning it up. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that you're not 6'2". So when you go low, you're really low. Um, definitely, we want to spin up and forward. And on the backhand, you got to do something with that ball. Either backhand flip it, backhand loop it. If it's coming off the end of the table, okay, that's a topspin serve short to your forehand and you're pushing it. Read the topspin, 
go ahead and flip it, hopefully, because he's RPB. You want to flip more balls into the middle and forehand. Um, his backhand is going to play wide into your backhand. Serve and get ready to attack. Yeah, you can't serve it and then be blocking. That means the serve wasn't tight enough, it wasn't short enough, or it wasn't low enough. Good push. Spin that ball. You got to spin that ball. You make a quality push, he pushes it back. That's what you were looking for. We cannot push a push. I think I mentioned that in one of the chats. Good. Now stay up. Okay. If you're going to smash a ball, hopefully it's a weak ball and that it's not a ball that you're on that one you're reaching for. I always like to say kind of sticking out our butts and really reaching for it. Let that ball come back or move in. We don't want to be out here playing a stroke. We want to get in close and then do the backhand. Okay, do more with that backhand return. You're just basically blocking a side top serve. Add a little bit of top spin, move it around, but we're not blocking serves. That's not, I mean, block a loop. Okay, and when we flip the ball, make sure you put some spin on it. Don't flip it just dead. Put a little bit of spin. Okay, serve, good one. Okay, after we made that backhand, get ready to play a forehand. Don't be surprised that it's coming back. Good serve, spin it. Okay, so one of the things is we can't go from a third ball attack and always be slow spinning. That's a slow arcing ball. We want to be driving a little bit more on the third ball. Okay, good deep push. So you got him on the deep ball, just like he's kind of getting you on the flips that come out a little bit. Okay, be ready. Backhand, right shot, right idea. Just look like you pulled the trigger to go for a winner when we can spin that first ball on. Okay, backhand, get ready to step around. Okay, no blocking. No blocking on the third ball. We can't serve and block. That means that you either didn't place it well or you served it into a strength push, spin up. Yeah, on those, those you can drive a little bit more. You're going to spin them off the end of the tail because his push has no underspin on it. So when he just pushes it back, we want to be a little bit more drivey than lifty. And backhand, again, same thing on the forehand. Add a little bit of brush, a little bit of spin. Your first flip is going to be more spin than speed. Okay, good short ball. And the net balls are always going to have a weird amount of spin. Just take those off the bounce. Okay, serve. Let's get ready to attack. Get ready to attack. Okay, we'll take that point. Okay, deep serve. When you serve deep, right idea. First bounce is close to your end line. But when you serve deep, be ready to take a half a step back and attack because no one's going to go short off of a deep serve. Good backhand, but add some spin. Add a little bit of spin. You shouldn't be thinking of hitting a winner off their serve as much as placing it. Good net ball. And then be ready. You play the net ball, get ready. Don't, after you play the net ball, kind of stand up or just let that ball stay into play. Good serve. Forehand. Good. We've got to drive it. There's still a lot of dropping the racket below the table on balls that pop up. That's a lifting loop. I need you to do a driving loop. Nice serve. Okay. Be ready after you serve that. Be completely ready. Push. When you push, put some spin on the ball. When you push, put some spin on the ball. So right now I'm going to jump over to tips and just kind of summarize. You're doing basic technique awesome. Strokes look super. There's a little bit of spinning the ball up when we should be spinning the ball forward. If somebody gives you a block, a flip, or a top spin, we don't want to start with our racket below the ball because there's already top spin on it. If your racket's below the ball, you're going to be actually slowing it down in order to make top spin. We want to be driving it forward. Use a little bit more shoulders. Still use your forearm to swing through it, but we're trying to go over the ball, not lift it. If you lift top spin, you're going to slow it down. We want to drive through it and take the advantage. When you're pushing, make sure you put spin on the ball. Don't just stick your racket out there and let their spin dictate the height of the ball. They give you a ball that comes over, you take it off the bounce, you cut it, or if you're going to push it deep and dead, keep that angle fixed and push through it and make it a clear shot so it's either it's a short push, a deep heavy, or a dead heavy. There's not a lot of dead short pushes. That, that doesn't occur because you would have to take all their spin off and then give it dead. It's going to pop. But there are dead deep pushes that jam the opponent. So if they think, oh, I'm going to rip this ball, they rip it off the end. Okay, On the backhand... Like myself, I was never known for good backhand play, but I dealt with it. 
we've got to add a little bit of topspin. I feel like there's a tendency that when you loop the forehand, if they return it quick to the backhand, you're just kind of countering and blocking. Just take your time and spin it. You can spin it in front of your body, but place it. Don't just spin it on the table. Spin it to their wide forehand if they're in the backhand corner. Spin it to their elbow if they're close to the table. Or spin it to their backhand if you don't want to see them counterattack it. Maybe they'll block that ball. But I would say from a drill perspective, having somebody just block to your backhand and you spin one ball to their middle, one ball to their backhand. One ball to the middle, one ball to the backhand. will get you thinking about a placement off the backhand versus just to put it on the table. Um, Serve-wise, great mixing up the serves, some nice deep ones. Just be ready to play the next ball. Don't serve and be like a deer in the headlights. What's going on? No, you serve with a purpose. If I'm serving underspin, I'm looking for a push. Then your racket can be below the ball. If I'm serve, serving side top, I got to get my racket higher because here comes a fast top spin rally. No one's going to be pushing your serves. Not good players. So you serve side top. Get your hands up. Be ready to counter over the top of it versus blocking the ball. Also, where you serve plays a big role, whether you're serving short to their forehand, deep to their backhand, into their pocket, short to the middle. Think about serving all your different serves, but to different locations. And when one serve works, try it to a different location, see if it works again. If that's the case, there's a chance they have a problem reading that spin or their footwork is weak. But we don't want to have 56 different, 57 different serves like Heinz. What you want to do is have two or three, maybe four different serves, but have different placements with them that always set up that first loop. If you like to loop underspin, then you got to be serving more chop because then you're going to get more pushes. If you like to loop topspin, serve more topspin. Okay? You need to read the opponent. If they're having difficulty with your underspin serve, do more of them, but it should be supplemented or complemented by the fact that you have a good loop off of underspin. If your loop off against underspin is terrible, you shouldn't be serving chop. I think your loop is actually really nice against underspin. However, it seems that you're doing a little bit of that backswing, or I'd call it a downswing, against topspin. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. We need to have the same length of stroke, but let it come back versus starting down. So those are kind of just random tips watching a eight minute quick match. I'm happy to provide you with any additional talk, whether it's through text messaging or Zoom session. But like I said, Ernesto, I've spoken to him quite a bit. Um, he's really impressed with all the work that you're doing. Um, Ernesto and I go way back. And anything that I can do to help PingPod get to that next level, um, I'm all up for it. So have a great evening. I'll send this over. And um, you take care. Bye now.